Okay, I started recording. Okay, is everybody ready? We're ready. All right, er cool. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm going to take the collective silence as a collective yes. And the collective silence, I think, in a, in a lot of ways is being forced. So uh, here we go. And you said, uh, Christy, you said that we're ready? Yes, we are. Marvelous. Thank you so much. Okay, so <clears throat> good evening and thank you for joining us for the 2020 edition of the Bethlehem Food Co-op Annual Member Meeting. My name is Kelly Allen and I am your co-op board chair. I know that it goes without saying that in response to the current pandemic, we need to conduct our meeting a little differently this year. On behalf of myself and the rest of our board, I want to say thank you for your continued flexibility, patience, and support. The way we have structured our virtual meeting this year is that we have decided to focus on the major updates and happenings of our co-op while giving all participants the opportunity to ask questions both during and after the meeting. The question and answer portion of this meeting will be conducted on the chat function. For those of us who are new to Zoom, uh, to the Zoom platform, if you'll take a moment to move your cursor to the lower part of your Zoom screen, you'll see a few options that are available to you. One of them says chat, and if you click on that, you'll see the chat bar show up on the right-hand side of your Zoom screen. Um, so I'll go over here to chat now and just give you all a little hello. You should be able to see me. Um, all right, so uh, if at any time uh, during or after this evening's program, you would like to ask a question or make a comment, please feel free to put it in this area. If you find the rolling chat to be a distraction, you can hide it by simply clicking on the chat tool icon. Uh, and please don't feel pressure to follow both the presentation and the chat at the same time. I do want to point out that this meeting is being recorded. So if you want to look back at any particular section, you'll be able to do so after we've made the recording live. Um, so after I've given the initial updates for this evening's meeting, I will transition over to the chat area where myself and a few other board members and volunteers will moderate that section. In order to keep things organized, please keep the chat function to questions and comments only. Uh, so thank you and without further ado, we will now begin the annual meeting and if you care to follow along, we'll include a copy of the agenda via a Google Doc in the link in chat. So I'll actually do that right now. So it's the same link as the one above for those of you who have been on with us for a little while now. Um, okay, so uh, next slide, please, Christy. Um, so I'd like to open this evening's meeting with some highlights uh, that have happened since last October. It has been another busy year for our co-op and rather than try to cover everything, there are four areas I would like to bring to your attention. Next slide, please. The first change we made, which I'm sure many of you have noticed has been in our communication. This year, we made a firm commitment to increase the frequency and level of transparency with our communications. I'm pleased to say that the response we have received from many of you has been glowing. So thank you for that. Um, I, want, I want you to know that we will continue to push ourselves in this area, and I would also like to take a brief moment to thank volunteer Carol Burns for her tremendous work in making this initiative the success that it is. Thank you very much, Carol. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, member growth is still a big part of our identity. Our strength and our future successes lie in our membership. While the pandemic had caused a brief stall in our efforts for recruiting new members, the pandemic also taught us all the value of a strong local food economy. During the last few months, thanks in large part to our volunteers serving at the Rose Garden Farm Market, our community has stepped up huge and we have again started seeing a steady increase in membership. I believe that the latest total is that we are now at 723 members strong. Um, I would like to thank Kathy Fox, Joe Klinkoff, Chris Bartleson, Joe Whelan, Carol Burns, and all of the other Rose Garden Farm Market volunteers for all of their tremendous work. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Um, there is one final major task to be addressed before we make the site announcement, and that is to complete our lease negotiations. 
As all of you know by now, we have identified a site that we know will allow us to serve our community and contribute to the growth and strength of our local food economy. These last several months, our lead negotiators, Colleen Marsh and Elliot Nolter, have been doing an incredible job to make sure that the relationship we enter in with the developer puts us in a position to be successful. In addition to their efforts, we have hired legal counsel to help us with the negotiation process. And as of this weekend, we have made a verbal commitment with a project management team who will bring in the necessary expertise to see us across the finish line. Next slide, please. The project management team we are about to build, uh, we are about to build a relationship, comes to us with 25 years of grocery store construction, food co-op, grocery finance, marketing, and fundraising experience. We anticipate engaging in and completing contract negotiations this week, and we will be introducing this new part of our co-op family in the very near future. Next slide, please. Uh, now I'd like to talk about where we are going. Next slide, please. While the co-op has been engaged in various initiatives regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion since the beginning, we all have realized that we can be doing much more. Now, unfortunately, due to the uh, pandemic, our community hubs program has been put on a temporary hiatus, uh, but we anticipate restarting that relationship in the coming months. Um, but two months ago, six members of the Lehigh Valley community and I got together for the first of what will be many equity oversight committee meetings. The task for this group is to make sure that the co-op remains focused as an institution committed to the dismantling of white supremacy and colonial ideologies. Next slide, please. One initiative that we have not had a chance to get started has been our monthly study groups. Um, for this part of our work uh, regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion, we, we quite simply need le leadership from our community to step forward and help us get this going. Uh, what we propose is a monthly meetup where members of the community can share and discuss podcasts, books, articles, documentaries, and music that focuses on issues stemming from white supremacy and colonial ideologies. And now the, the pictures that you see on the screen there, those are some of um, kind of the, the pieces of like literature, like again, podcasts, articles, um, documentaries that um, I've been engaging with and um, I'm really looking forward to sharing some of this with you. So, um, but if you're interested in, in being a part of this initiative, please do not hesitate in, in getting in touch. Next slide, please. Um, and as I said a moment ago, uh, the site announcement is coming soon. Uh, there are some steps that need to be addressed before that can happen. So please stay tuned. And as always, please get involved. We can always use your help. Next slide, please. Finally, I would like to start our conversation about the capital campaign. For our store to open and be the success that we know it can be, we will need to work together and raise the finances necessary to make our co-op a reality. The chair of our capital campaign will be board member Carol Ritter, and shortly she will be sharing uh, more about this exciting stage of our co-op's growth. Now, I would like to pass the mic over uh, to Kathy Fox and Joe Klinkoff, who will share a few words about some exciting things coming from our MOVE committee. Um, and again, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please use the chat function and I'll see you there. So Kathy, Joe, take it away. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, the MOVE committee uh, has been busy this year. The following slides will list a bunch of things we've done and um, put out there for the public uh, to enjoy and or participate in. Um, I've listed them by their uh, section, membership, or outreach. Uh, some of them are duplicated because we felt they belonged in different um, categories, but we will just, I'm not gonna really talk about them except for a few in specifics. We're going to talk more about the um, concepts behind them. Next slide, please. Anything you see marked with the word hiatus is obviously an ongoing program that has been suspended by COVID. Uh, we've been doing our best. Uh, some things have been continued, uh, but other things have had to be put by the wayside. Our main vehicle this year, as Kelly had said, has been a steady weekly presence at the Rose Garden Farmer's Market. 
um, and other farmers markets in the Lehigh Valley, Saucon Valley, um, Nazareth. A uh, steady presence has resulted in a, a steady flow of members on a weekly basis. We have an average of two to three, three new members a week just by being out there and spreading the word. The catch up with the co-op event, if you're not familiar with it, has been well received as well. It's a simple hour long program that answers questions about co-ops in general and about our co-op specifically. A direct ask to join is made at the end of the presentation for people who have not um, come in contact with us before. Any public facing event that we hold, we realize can result in new members if our volunteers are ready and willing to talk about our co-op. Uh, next slide, please. Outreach has been hard this year. We have released three or four videos. If you haven't seen our videos this year, please take some time in the next week to take them in. A huge thank you to Johnny uh, Quinones for his video skills and giving of his time and energy to bring us those videos. Why I Want to Co-op, the Farmer's Market Shopping video and, uh, farmers and, sh and the Farm Stand Shopping were great videos. If you haven't seen them, take them in. We made an effort uh, during the pandemic to reach people and reassure them that there are local food resources out there that are not um, as heavily affected as other ones that were um, done by, damaged by the co-op. So that short food chain from farm to table. Um, our own members uh, showing why they think co-op is, is an important for our community was a fun video we did on a lark and we just solicited people to submit themselves with a sign that said why I want my, why I want my co-op. Um, and then Kelly did talk about um, an announcement. He made a video on how seriously we do take the issue of social justice um, with ongoing involvement in this issue, as he said. And as the public space opens up, we hope to do more for our co-op, um, like get our hubs program back in action and other ideas that we, we, have, we have on the table. Next slide. We'll be tabling until the second week of November uh, at the various farmers markets. If you haven't done it, think about signing up for a shift. They're a good time. Never done it before? Stop by for a half hour, see how it's done, see what we do. Pick up some co-op swag if you don't have it already and um, then you can sign up for a shift. It's basically a great way to meet your community, talk about the co-op, and just get some fresh air, take some groceries home from a local farm, and have a good time. Please watch for our calls to action. In the newsletter, our social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, in our Facebook group. Please remember, every time you wear your button in public or a t-shirt that says Bethlehem Food Co-op, um, you have an opportunity to be a volunteer for the co-op. Just one conversation with someone who's interested could bring us a new member or two along the way. Um, and I really want to thank, again, uh, Chris Bartleson, Carol Burns, Nick Laird, Lindsay Poncavage, and John Whalen. Um, they have really been our anchor for the MOVE Committee during the pandemic. Uh, it's been tough. Some people are, you know, not ready to get out there, um, but they have been there tabling for us, artwork for us, helping with other projects, but they've been the core. So join us. Next slide, please. Uh, we will be holding our second academic conference, the Vili High Valley Food Conference in April of this year or next year, actually. Uh, it has been delayed by COVID twice. Uh, we've decided next year we're either going to do it in, per in person or virtually, depending on how that works out for us. Um, we have mentioned before, we've actually opened the lines of communication to you, our members. You now have a bi-weekly newsletter that gives you the updates, where we are, what we're doing, where we're going to be. If your household is not receiving that newsletter or you don't know if you are or not, Please be aware of it, please check, and if you're not, please contact someone, and we'll be sure that we have the correct email address to send that newsletter to. Uh, and, you know, as we get closer to that great site announcement, we want to make sure that our, our lines are strong and open for communication. Uh, look for more informative videos and reestablishment of some of our other educational programs uh, as the pandemic allows. If you have a topic you're really interested in, let someone know and we'll see if we can put together a video or a short presentation from someone via Zoom. Next, please. 
Our current calls to action, we are currently looking for a coordinator for the Artisan and Craft Fair in spring of 2021. Uh, this particular, it would be our seventh or eighth annual. Our current coordinator, uh, kids need a little bit of extra help, so she has decided that she'd help us out, but we need a new coordinator. We're looking for a frequent Twitter user to supplement our feed. Um, if you like to tweet and you don't mind throwing a few extra tweets out there, please contact us. We'll make sure we put you in touch with Cal Burns and she'll get you on the rotation. A content creator, a bi-weekly newsletter. If you see something interesting on the web, if you see a relevant news article or a local news article that you think fits, send a link, just throw a few sentences down. We'd be happy to include it with the um, next newsletter. And we're also looking for someone to help follow up with new members. Next, please. Uh, two quick commercials. The Halloween Parade in Bethlehem is virtual this year. So we're gonna be doing a short, under a minute video, including our friends and families and children wearing costumes or masks, and then we'll edit that video and submit it to the city to be shown during the regular Halloween Parade on multiple channels. So if you're interested, check our newsletter, check the website, there's multiple places to sign up. And the last slide, please. If you haven't done the catch up with the Bethlehem Food Co-op, Lindsay Pond Cabbage's artwork there, um, we, like we understand that if you're here, you're fully and completely updated on what's going on. But if you have friends or family members who are interested, kind of interested, want to know more, send us their email addresses. We'll make sure they get the next um, invite. It's under, it's about an hour with questions. And we cover what is a co-op and what is our co-op. It's a great session. It's kind of fun. We throw in some catch-up trivia. Everyone learns. Uh, simply, simple, easy, and painless. So just uh, get us their email addresses and we'll be good to go. So that's the move committee this year. And now I believe I'm handing it over to Dominic who is gonna give us our finance report. Thanks, Joe. Um, so yeah, the prior slide, thank you. So I'm gonna give a brief update um, on our membership growth and what we've invested in um, in the last year. Um, so we're currently at 724 members uh, since our beginning. I think I caught one more from what, what Kelly had counted earlier in the presentation. Um, and as you can see, we're at just over $200,000 in member equity. Uh, we added 63 new members year to date, which is a little slower than what we've seen in the past due to the pandemic. Um, but as has been discussed by Joe and Kelly previously, the farmers market tables have been attracting new membership uh, recently. And we've seen um, quite a bit of uh, resurgent week to week uh, with people signing up at the uh, Rose Garden or the Saucon Valley uh, farmers market. Um, we've also taken on an initiative to extend membership rights to legal entities so we can um, attract businesses as members. And we're trying to make it a little easier for people to take on membership through um, a payment subscription plan um, and lowering that subscription to $10 a month um, so that it's, again, a little easier for people to take on and become members uh, of the co-op. So year to date, we are at $16,000 um, in what we raised in member equity. We have some other sources of income like grants, which I'll talk about on the next slide, um, but that's what we acquired from uh, new members this year. Uh, next slide, please. And so what have we invested in this year? So there's four major categories that we've um, really focused on this year. One is in the store layout design. And later on, um, Elliot's going to talk a little bit more about that, but that's really exciting to see and start visualizing what the inside of the store is going to look like. So um, that's been an exciting investment for us. The second is we're about to launch uh, a new website. And part of the reasoning for that is so that when we open our store, we have the ability to offer an online ordering section. So we need to revamp our website to make way for that. Um, as you've heard previously, we've also engaged in legal services for to finalize our site negotiations um, with the developer and landlord of the location of the store. And uh, lastly, we hired a professional to help us prepare grant applications. Um, so they're both looking for grants that we can apply for and then helping us apply for them. 
Um, we have one from the city of Bethlehem right now um, that we, I, I think, won in 2019 and um, have received funds from uh, the last two years. Um, but uh, we'll continue to look for some additional grants and use these services to apply for those grants. So uh, for 2020 year to date, um, we spent uh, just under $30,000 in you know, what we see as these very, very important uh, investments to, to help us as a co-op move forward. Um, so that's my brief update. I'm gonna hand it over to Kathy Fox now and she's gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the co-op and uh, membership goals. Okay, thanks Dominic. Um, I'm sure that everybody on this call is familiar about uh, why we support or why you support the Bethlehem Food Co-op. Uh, but I put that up there because we're gonna be talking about membership today and getting people uh, that aren't members to understand why they should support the Bethlehem Food Co-op. Uh, <clears throat> now you've seen our, our membership numbers uh, that Dominic uh, showed you and our revenue and our expenses. But I'm here to talk about the importance of uh, membership for a startup cooperative. And I know everybody's been talking about the Rose Garden, but I do also want to express my gratitude uh, to the Rose Garden Farmers Market staff because they uh, allowed us or are allowing us to be there every single weekend. I, I do wish we had done uh, every single weekend other years, but it all depends on um, you know, membership, uh, I mean, I should say volunteerism. Um, and I want to thank our 14 volunteers that have, um, and our board for helping to table and educate the community uh, about the benefits of for, for supporting Bethlehem Food Co-op. Tabling at the farmer's markets has really been a godsend um, during this pandemic because we did have to cancel um, uh, and, and stop planning regular events of the entire spring. Um, out of all the members that have joined this year, uh, about 40, 46 of those new members joined during our time when we were tabling at farmer's markets. Um, and the majority of those people either learned about us at the farmer's market or heard about us and were updated and then decided that it was time for them to join. Um, an added bonus for all our volunteers uh, was that we not only met new people, but we were speaking and uh, meeting current members that some of whom we didn't really even know. And it was great to talk to them and see how excited that they are about the prospect of food co-op in uh, Bethlehem. Um, I think, um, well, I won't say next yet. Um, I know that all of you have your own reasons about why you support the Bethlehem Food Co-op. For me, it's all of the above. Um, but my two favorites are uh, that I try to make all my purchases with my values in mind. And I believe the Bethlehem Food Co-op will allow me to do that in a central place instead of going to like 15 million places. Um, and I'm also very passionate about sustainability and for my love of Bethlehem. And principle, that P7 means principle seven. That principle seven of the rules of cooperation is concern for the community. And I believe that uh, sustainability also falls under that. Um, I did want to tell you that I, I'm very thrilled to tell you, to report to you that after 10 years of work, the, our uh, neighbors at the South Philly Food Co-op are opening their store this month with approximately 1,500 committed members. Uh, their success depended on everyone, uh, not just the board, and to do their part to get their store open. Next slide, please. So I'm here today. Um, to announce that we're going to have a fall membership campaign. And so with the reasons that, uh, I want you to take the reasons that you support Bethlehem Food Co-op and keep that in your mind. And now that you really know the importance of membership for startups, I'm going to ask that you help us um, by recruiting members uh, until the end of the year. 
Um, our current goal of 800 uh, is, um, is, I believe, is doable as long as we all work together. Um, and so how are we going to get there? Um, and we have some ideas. So next slide, please. All right, so we've created uh, some incentives um, for new members and uh, we came up with for each new member, we're gonna give them one share to win a CSA share, which is a box, uh, a weekly box of food uh, from a local farmer or a cheese share, which is also a weekly, uh, uh, weekly cheese from a, cheese, a local cheese maker. Um, if we reach our 800 by uh, December 31st, we're going to draw three winners. Um, for current members, in order to give you an incentive, uh, we've decided to uh, give each person that recommends someone who actually joins one chance for uh, a similar, similar um, prize. Um, we do know that not everyone um, may want a, a box of vegetables every week because they might have gardens um, or even the cheese share. So we've decided that if anyone does not want that, we will gladly donate that prize to a local food bank in order to help uh, facilitate um, support of our local uh, food system and, um, and the resiliency of our food system. Next. Okay, in addition, um, I think um, Dominic had mentioned it, but I wanted to announce that the board has approved new opportunities for membership. Uh, to make it easier for some families to join, we will have a new tier that will be available on our new website, and it will be $10 a month for 30 months. Um, you know, of course, we do hope that people that can afford the $300 or the $25 a month will continue to do that because um, we need the capital in order to continue um, uh, the process of uh, bringing this food co-op to you. Um, and like many other co-ops, uh, including Weaver's Way down in Philadelphia and Swarthmore um, Community Co-op in Swarthmore, Pennsylvania, um, <clears throat> we have, are now approving legal entities, or I should say legal entities are now eligible to join, but for their organization's purchases only. Uh, so if you uh, have a business um, that would be interested in giving a similar offer uh, to your employees, please let us know. Um, we'd love to um, have a chat with you. Uh, oh, I don't think I even told you about that. Sorry. Anyway, so our other idea is um, about the employee benefit. We actually have a local business that is offering to pay the first $25 installment for any employee who would like to join the co-op if they would go on and um, then uh, sign up for automatic withdrawals. So anyway, so that's what I, if you're interested in that, if you know a local business or you own one uh, that might be interested in that, please let us know. Uh, next. And of course, uh, Joe Klinkoff and I will be delighted to give a virtual presentation to any organization or group you belong to or know of. Um, we will be making presentations this month to the Bethlehem uh, Environmental Advisory Council. Oh, actually, that's uh, November 2nd, I think. Um, uh, the Northampton uh, County College Peace Conference on October 13th. And also, we'll be presenting to the Unitarian Universalist Church's uh, Breakfast Forum. Um, so what group do you belong to? Uh, and would you like us to present to them? Uh, please contact us at info at Bethlehem.coop uh, if you do. And um, thanks so much. And let's go out and recruit some members. And now I'd like to introduce Elliot to talk about voting. All right, thanks, Kathy. Um, so yeah, here we go. So the uh, you have been receiving. If you're the primary member of your household, you should have been receiving uh, emails over the last month, 
Um, if you haven't seen those or maybe they're going in your spam folder, I encourage you to um, search for those. The latest email sent was actually this afternoon, um, I think around 1.30 this afternoon. So if you haven't yet voted, please find that email and do so. Um, the sender of that email will show up as Bethlehem Food Co-op, but it actually comes from the, the site that we use called uh, Election Runner. So if you search for the term Election Runner um, in your emails, th that should be one way to find it. Um, if you click on the voting link in that email, it'll take you right to the ballot and you can then cast your ballot. Um, and again, if you haven't received those emails for some reason, maybe we have your email address wrong or you've changed your email address or, or it's going to your spam folder, um, that's okay. You can still vote. And I'm gonna right now um, put a link in the chat window. Hey, Kathy, can you mute your, I think you're still on because, okay. Can everyone see me now? Well, either way, you don't have to see me, as long as you can hear me. <laughs> um, so uh, there's the link. If you can't find your email, you can use this link, but you just have to remember to put in your email address as the voter ID and your member number as the voter key. So if you don't know those things, um, feel free to contact me or search for that email. Um, and the voting will be open until 7.30. So you've got about a half an hour and um, we'll be available. I'll be available over the next several minutes in the chat window. Like I said, I can help you out if you need it. Um, so yeah, that's it for voting. Uh, we have, I mean, if you haven't heard already, we have uh, three seats opening up this October for a three-year term, and there's four candidates running for those three seats. So now I'd like to introduce Jacqueline Hanna, the Assistant Director of Food Co-op Initiative. Uh, FCI is a wonderful organization that provides countless resources for startup co-ops just like us all across the country. Um, Jacqueline and her team host conferences, publish how-to guides, and connect co-ops with sources for funding, designing, opening, and, and managing food co-ops. They also just really love co-ops and want us to succeed. Um, so they are a huge resource for us. Jacqueline recorded this short video to encourage us and provide some perspective on our journey to store opening. I hope you find it inspiring to know that we have support from experts scattered across the country and that we are part of a national movement and a community of cooperators just like us. So enjoy and remember to vote. You can do it while this video is playing. I think whoever is playing the video, you probably need to unmute. Christy, I think you have to go to the view options up at the top. Hello there. My name is Jacqueline Hanna, and I'm the Assistant Director of Food Co-op Initiative. We're a nonprofit organization that helps people open up food co-ops all across the U.S. And I'm here tonight to talk to you just a little bit about this amazing movement that you guys are part of through the Bethlehem Food Co-op. You've all been working for numerous years to get your co-op open and are getting so close at this point. And there actually are almost 100 other communities across the country right now working to open their own food co-ops from the very first early conversations to actually building their store as we speak. 
So Bethlehem is part of a large movement and actually over 110 food co-ops have gotten open across the country, startups just like yours over the last decade. You're part of a powerful movement that has built a change in so many communities. And right now, there are communities like Fredericksburg, Virginia, where the Fredericksburg Food Co-op has raised over $2.1 million in their owner loan campaigns, and their building is being built from the ground up. Right now, as we speak, you can see it on their Facebook page, and they have a terrific general manager leading the charge. Hopefully that will be you soon. You can check out the Oshkosh Food Co-op in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. They're actually opening a store almost the identical size in a very similar sized community, also a college town uh, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. They raised $1.7 million in owner loans and donations just finished up in the middle of the pandemic because their community deeply believed in what they're doing and their building is being built right now as we speak. You can check that out on Facebook. You guys are following a pattern and a method that has been used by dozens and dozens of co-ops that have been wildly successful. If you get a chance, check out the Durham Food Co-op in Durham, North Carolina, which has actually not only opened, vastly exceeded sales expectations the last couple of years, but also innovated and really changed the movement, creating all sorts of fabulous things like the $3 dinner, where the community gets together one night a week for a $3 plate of food, live music, and community where everybody feels welcome. You guys are so close right now at Bethlehem. You have some terrific leaders who've been doing some really good work over the last few years, and you can see it, right? Look at the ownership growth you guys have had lately. That's the kind of momentum that we see at startups that make it all the way and get their doors open. The thing is, there's a couple things that aren't done yet, right? You're this close to an announcement of a site. You've been waiting for this for a long time, I know. <laughs> and so there's probably two questions in your mind that I wanna answer about this, which is one, well, once the site is announced, announced, what happens? Well, everything. And you know how it's taken years to get to the number of owners you've needed to get to the site, to get everything to happen, to find feasibility, to get things moving, and it's just, now, when the site is announced, everything is go. It's go time and your co-op will need you more than ever. Your community has already proven that it has the passion for the project, it has the passion for the vision and the meaning of what Bethlehem Food Co-op will be for its community to get this done. But to get it done, all the owners are gonna have to step up. We've got a lot to do. Ownership growth will need to continue and even pick up pace. You guys can totally do that, you're already picking it up. And I believe that you guys can get to 850 owners by the end of this year. I want to see you make it happen. That's my challenge to you. In, in, in addition to continuing to grow ownership, there's going to be all sorts of committee work to be done to finish applying for grants and to run that owner loan campaign. Your community is going to own this co-op. To get it done, it has to fund its own co-op. Now, not every owner will be able to make a loan, but the average or at food co-ops nationally is that 25 percent of owners will be able to step up and do that and if you can't make a loan that you can help by helping to grow ownership you could help with uh, paperwork finally even making calls for the owner loan campaign but the important thing will be that people step up and get involved this is going to be your co-op can it be done yes it's been done by so many communities, as I mentioned, Fredericksburg Food Co-op, Oshkosh Food Co-op, check out Durham, check out, uh, <laughs> check out East Aurora Food Co-op. I could just go on and on. It's been done, and you guys have been doing some incredible work that shows you've got what it takes to make it to that opening day. But now, you've got to get it to even a new level. Join in with your co-op now that you've seen that you have success, you have a site, you have got all this ownership growth, that it's financially feasible if we just pull together and get these last pieces done. Now, that answers question number one, what happens when that site's announced? Question number two is, why aren't they announcing it already? We've been talking about there being a site. Believe me, nobody wants to announce that site more than your board of directors. They are chomping at the bit to do that, but you have charged them by electing them to very carefully develop this business on your behalf so it will be successful and sound for years to come. And that takes negotiations. And if you've ever done lease negotiations, no matter how great your landlord, they always take longer than you expect. There's always a last little niggling detail. There's always one more thing that has to be changed in the contract. 
one more detail to be worked out. Your board is working diligently right now to finish those last details so they can tell you as soon as possible what that site's gonna be. I've had a sneak peek on what that site's gonna be and I promise you, I think you're gonna be very excited. So now is the time. Step up, get involved, believe in this project because you guys as a community, you can do this. You can transform your community and your food system right there in Bethlehem. Good luck. Well, welcome back to the presentation. That's a hard act to follow. Um, my name is Carol Burns. I'm a volunteer with the MOVE Committee. And one of my tasks has been to work on a new website. And we were hopeful that we could launch that this evening. Um, but we're at about 98% of completion. So watch for an announcement coming soon that our new site has launched. Um, one of the reasons, as Dominic mentioned earlier, that we wanted a new site was so we could add an e-commerce portion behind the site for future shopping online. We also wanted to make sure that our site was mobile friendly. And we also wanted to assure that the information was there both for folks who don't know anything about co-ops in general or our co-op and also for the current members who are looking for really specific information. So I'm going to do a little quick driving here and take us to um, our demo site and give you a sneak peek of what that's going to look like. So we partnered with a local shop, Image Evolution, based in downtown Bethlehem, and they helped us create this new presence online. And uh, we're just going to take a quick drive around. And when the store opens, obviously we'll have a picture of our store. But for the moment, um, again, we wanted to make sure that the membership information was um, up close and, and very prominent and also that folks would find out about our site so in our co-op. So our three initiatives, membership, the capital campaign and events are right here up front. Our status about the, um, where we are with our lease development. Uh, we have a nice, I have a laptop that's not cooperating with me, there we go. And a nice little video from Kelly. Information about why we're building a co-op and some more information about everybody involved in it. There's a nice section on recipes. We're always looking for recipes to add for all those local foods we're enjoying. And on each page, there's a way to get in touch with us, a way to sign up for our weekly e-newsletter. And we did add a new feature because of that e-commerce site where you can make a direct contribution. This is different than the payments that you make towards your equity payment. So this is a, a new feature that we were able to add. Uh, back up here, we have our membership area. I do wanna point out our member benefits program. I think that was mentioned. Um, do take a look at this list. If it's about 25 local businesses that offer discounts and perks to our members, and also there's a little form there for those um, local vendors who might be interested in providing um, goods and services to our store when it opens. So that's just a small form to fill out to show interest. We also have a new volunteer form. So I encourage you to take a look at that. Um, let's go over there. And in this, on this form, you can give us your contact info and also indicate the kinds of things that you might like to do for us and with us. The About Us section has all our information about us specifically, co-ops in general, our board leadership, which we'll be updating tonight. And then we have a little area called What's Cooking, and that includes our news and our events calendar. And again, you can find the recipes there. Contact us and then the, the e-commerce site as well. So one of the things that we'll do to beta test the e-commerce site is that we're going to offer an option to purchase co-op t-shirts. So be looking for that. That's a way that you can get your um, 
food co-op swag, and as Joe said, and Kathy, wear it proudly out in the community. So what you can do for us is when we launch this, take a look at it and give us feedback, please. Um, what links aren't working, where are the typos, what couldn't you find, what wasn't clearly written. Um, we want to make sure that our website represents us well out there in the bigger community. So before I hand it off to Elliot, I do want to say a very special welcome to our newest members. Um, I've seen your names pop up on the screen and it's just great to have you joining us, um, as well as our pioneer members, those first group of folks who took a giant leap of faith to say, yes, I want to help bring a co-op to Bethlehem. So welcome to everyone. Thank you. And now I'm going to pass it back to Elliot, who has uh, some exciting information about our store. Great. Thanks, Carol. Is the slideshow up? Coming up. All right. There we go. All right. So I know this isn't uh, super exciting to you uh, people out there that, that don't look at floor plans all the time, but as an architect, this got me really excited. Um, and uh, I'll try to walk you through it the best I can. So this is um, a layout that our store designer, Seven Roots Group, um, has put together. They're a firm. Uh, they're actually a co-op themselves, um, owned by their employees. And they're a group of great people from the co-op world who decided to band together and deliver store design, graphic design, um, marketing services, specifically geared to food co-ops across the country. So anyway, they put this this together for us and this is the approximate um, leasable area that we are going to be working with. And um, so this this will represent the, the square footage very closely to what we will end up with and the approximate layout. Um, so at the top of your page there, where the red arrow is, you'll see uh, that is like the vestibule entrance. So it'll be you know like a normal grocery store with the sliding doors. Um, those, those stacked things there are, are carts to the right of the red arrow. So as you come in, uh, you'll be welcomed with like a, a beautiful produce section, just like you would see you know walking into Wegmans or something like that, but. Not quite as large as Wegmans, but we're going to have a great mix of local produce, organic produce, and uh, some some more affordable stuff, uh, so that you know there's options for everyone. And it's you know you may not have 12 different options of apples, but you'll have enough that uh, you should be able to find everything you need. So from there, you'll walk through dairy. Uh, there, there's a bulk section. There'll be some highlighted. Um, displays, maybe rotating displays um, along the whole back edge. At the bottom of the page is your freezers, refrigerated foods, meats, and then there's approximately four or five aisles of uh, just your dry goods and wellness products, uh, you know, toiletries, all that stuff that you'd find at a, at a more conventional grocery store. Um, but we're going to highlight local producers, not just for the food, but soap makers, um, you know, everything you can imagine, the people that you see at the farmer's markets, you know, we're going to reach out to them and, and try to get their products in our store. Um, so a lot of really cool, exciting stuff. We're going to focus primarily on natural and organic, but as I said before, the, there will be affordable options as well if, if those aren't in your budget. Um, and there'll be programs that we do, um, coupons, you know, different um, things to get people out to the store, you know, sa sales, just like you would have at a normal grocery store. Um, there's always, if you are a member, there's always the member benefits and, and the discounts you get um, at the end of the year through that. And if you're not a member, um, you know, it's going to be competitive to your grocery stores throughout the Lehigh Valley. So definitely a, a place where you can do all your grocery shopping. Um, so as you walk through the space, you'll see another exciting part of the store 
on the right hand side of the page um, there's a seating area that might be like an indoor outdoor open kind of thing and that will be facing the street so the main entrance is facing the parking lot whereas there'll be a street presence as well um, where there, there's seating and there, there may be like a prep kitchen deli counter kind of grab and go component uh, in the bottom right hand corner there that can service indoor and maybe seasonally it can service directly to the outside as well onto the street so that's something that i'm personally excited about um yeah so i think it, it, you know it, it's small but it's going to be efficiently laid out we're working with some of the best designers um and me being an architect on our end i know the questions to ask i know what to look for so i'm hopefully gonna um, get us the best store for our money and for our size um, it's going to have, you know, a full back of house on the left hand side of your page there for stocking the shelves, a kitchen, uh, a loading dock where we can have trucks come and, and deliver our groceries. So um, it's really exciting. And uh, here comes my dog. He just busted into my room. <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's approximately 4,200 retail square feet and a 6,500 total square foot space so that that remainder is the back of house stuff that I was just talking about. Um, and it's going to be lo located in our downtown. So stay tuned soon. We, like uh, Jacqueline mentioned in her video, we would love to make that announcement as soon as we can, but we're working through those details to make sure that we don't jump the gun. So um, with that, I think I'm handing it off to Carol Ritter to talk about our capital campaign. Good evening, everybody. I just want to thank my colleagues on the board of directors, uh, the volunteer leadership that we have. In addition, the devoted volunteers, we so appreciate all the work you're doing for us. The support that we have from the leaders in Bethlehem is unbelievable. Senator Boscola, Representative Samuelson, the mayor of Bethlehem, the Bethlehem City Council, and the staff has been unprecedented. We not only appreciate you, we enjoy having you on this journey with us. Next slide. I wanna talk about progress. So let's start with the capital campaign. We have been laying the groundwork for the capital campaign. We need $2.9 million to open the store. The capital campaign is virtually not possible without the active, engaged, trustful, membership and extended community. So to date, we have met with, had a very, uh, actually more than one meeting with Embassy Bank, very promising meetings for uh, a loan for the capital campaign. We are creating a capital campaign leadership team. We're creating a new website uh, that is going to be, and you just saw that, fundraising friendly, in addition to many other things, and increase the communication with our membership and friends. Next. We are current, we have had a, a magnificent membership turnout this year. The COVID may have uh, come into our lives, but it didn't really slow us down. Uh, so we in increased membership, membership significantly. We wanted to stay relevant with our members. We wanted you to know that we were continuing to work and our membership growth is, is a product of that. We're preparing the campaign documents so that we can ask for loans and donations and so on. We met with campaign attorneys. It's a special niche actually um, that have ex extensive experience uh, in working with co-ops. And we're working with the city of Bethlehem to release our CBD, CBDG money, which is totaling about $150,000. Next, where do we go from here? The Bethlehem Food Co-op Capital Campaign. We're going to launch a naming contest with the members to get the members excited and involved right from the start. We're going to hire an attorney to do our paperwork. Next. And then once the lease is signed, we plan to launch uh, an announcement event. That event we're hoping will be live. But if it isn't, we can do it virtually as well. That event will be when we announce the, we announce the site, we get people excited, 
generally speaking from other co-ops we work with, that is when you're you have a significant membership growth at that event. And then we begin the quiet stage of our campaign. We've had a number of people reach out to us already asking us, can I help with this? Can I give you money? I have a foundation. I'd like to see if we could get involved with you. So we have a, a, a nice, uh, not a long list, but I'd say a moderate list of people who are, have already said, I want to invest. I want to be a part of opening this store. And then we formally launch the campaign. Next. So the board is committed to opening this store. We're committed to serving you, our membership, and the greater community. Together, let's grow our membership. Let's volunteer to help with the campaign. And last but not least, we need you with us on this journey. We need you standing right next to us when we open the door to the Bethlehem Food Co-op. And I'm gonna throw it over to, we have a small video from a fellow by the name of Rich with the Fredericksburg Co-op who just recently raised a few million dollars. Take it away, Rich. Hi, this is Rich LaRochelle. I'm a director at the Fredericksburg Food Co-op. Hi, this is Rich LaRochelle. I'm a director at the Fredericksburg Food Co-op. We're located here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is between DC and Richmond. About five years ago, a group of us uh, started the Fredericksburg Food Co-op, uh, and today we have uh, over 1,550 co-op owners, and we've raised uh, 4.3 mm -hmm. million to open a 10,000 square foot co-op grocery. We're a startup much like your own Bethlehem Food Co-op. In terms of the money we've raised, most of it has come from our co-op owners, including co-op loans of 2.2 million, preferred stock that we offered of 238,000 and co-op ownership investments of about 300,000 that um, co-op owners make a $200 investment when they join the co-op. We launched two co-op owner loan campaigns. One was in 2019 um, and we had a goal of raising 1.6 million. We ended up raising 1.7 million. So that was a lot of fun. And then in 2020, in the middle of COVID in March, we launched our second owner loan campaign because we needed to raise an additional 750,000. We ended up raising 780,000. In both cases, our campaigns were very successful and well received by our community. In launching these, this two, these two campaigns, we really just followed the blueprint it was established by the Food Co-op Initiative. They have this great little book on um, a workbook on how to launch a campaign. So we just followed the model here. We didn't have to reinvent the wheel. So it's a great example of cooperation among cooperatives. So what did we offer to our co-op owners? We offered them the ability to make a loan to the co-op and we gave them the ability to select the rate that they wanted uh, on their loan up to 6%, depending upon how much they invested. But they could pick a rate between zero and 6%. The average rate was um, four and a half percent. And all of the loans were 15 year loans subordinated to bank debt. In each of our campaigns, we had 15 to 20 volunteers who worked really hard and really well, reaching out to the co-op owners and making this opportunity known to them. Our value proposition um, is very simple. Um, the value proposition is that co-op owners can earn a fair return while doing something really great for their community. And this value proposition really resonated with our co-op owners. Co-ops offer all of us the ability to invest in our communities. It's very, very different from what we usually do with our investments, which might be mutual funds or index funds or individual stocks. When we do that, we're investing in companies that we may not even share their values. 
Compared to that, when we invest in a food co-op, we're investing in a business in our local community whose values we uh, really resonate with us. Uh, food co-ops have been doing these own to loan campaigns for decades. We were really crowdfunding before crowdfunding was a thing. With the food co-op, you can walk into the co-op, um, you can buy the products, you can uh, have a voice and a say in the operation, and you know it's doing something really great for your community. It's really important for co-op owners to participate in funding the co-op. If you're looking for other investors like banks or other funders, which we were, um, they won't want to be involved unless the owners of the business, the co-op owners have skin in the game. So um, that's one of the reasons that it's really essential that you give, that we all give this opportunity to our co-op owners and that they participate. We had a lot of fun running our co-op owner loan campaigns. It was great calling the owners. It was great sending the materials. When we called our co-op owners, even if they didn't want to participate, they were happy to hear from us because they were already subscribed to what the co-op believes in. And we were calling our friends, we were calling our neighbors. So we really had a great time. I hope you'll have as good a time in your co-op owner loan campaign. And I'm anxious to hear about your success and I'm even more anxious to visit your co-op once you open in the near future. Thanks again. All right, I guess this is me. Um, it is now 7.30, wow, look at that timing, 7.31. Um, so voting, I need to go and close it officially. Um, but let me just look here quickly. All right, so it appears we have three clear winners for the seats on the board starting, um, I guess this month, uh, immediately. <laughs> um, so I, I just wanna thank all four of our candidates for running. Um, it's a big commitment and it means a lot that we have interest from our members um, in taking on these leadership positions. So I wanna thank you all for applying. Um, and I guess <clears throat> without further ado, the three winners are in no particular order. Uh, Dominic Reininger, who also happens to be our current treasurer. So people have seen his face, I think, recently, and uh, they're going to continue to see it. <laughs> uh, Cindy Glick, our current board member, uh, ran for a reelection. And Tony Marino, uh, who texted me earlier, he couldn't join us tonight, um, but he's eagerly awaiting his response. So thank you to Alexandra for your interest. Um, we encourage you to, to stay involved in some way, either not, a, you know, whether or not as a board member, there's certainly volunteering opportunities um, and just stay engaged with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so Dominic, Cindy and Tony, congratulations. And uh, we'll see you at our October board member meeting, if not sooner. Um, next slide. I think with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Kelly to take us home. Excellent, thank you, Elliot. Um, and again, uh, congratulations to Dominic, Cindy and Tony. I'll be uh, reaching out to uh, the three of you shortly uh, to just kind of get things ready for your transition to your uh, board position. I would also like to uh, take this time to thank Chris Gomez and Arlene Clendenning uh, for their service on the board. Um, and I look forward to working with the both of you um, on a volunteer basis in the future. Uh, so again, I just want to remind you all to, to stay tuned and be prepared for our site announcement that will be coming in the very near future, but also uh, get involved in any way that you can with our membership campaign and our capital campaign. You'll be hearing a lot about these in the, in the very near future. And uh, always remember that the strength and success of our co-op lies in the strength and uh, success of our membership. 
Next slide, please. And with that, I would like to say thank you for joining us for this year's annual member meeting. Our next general board meeting will be on Monday, October 19th at 6.30 on Zoom. Uh, please stick around for questions and conversations, and I look forward to another productive year serving our Bethlehem Food Co-op. Thank you, and have a wonderful night. And we're sticking around for some questions, right, Kelly? Yes, we are. So uh, you can put your questions up in chat and um, the uh, board members uh, can open up their, their video and unmute themselves and then we can answer them as they come through. And if there's no questions, well then I'll get on to the next stage of my evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing it involves a beverage. Is that correct, Kelly? Yes, totally. Okay. Thanks for outing me there, Elliot. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's a celebration. If we were in person, we'd be doing that. Yeah, yep. true, yep. true. Any questions coming in? I guess we covered it. You nailed it. If everybody who's not on video, if you want to jump on, I'll take a picture of everybody for the posterity. There's some faces. We couldn't all see right. faces Hello. all night. This is great. <clears throat> Thank you guys for sticking with us to the end. This is great. Actually, we're on two screens. Oh, goodness. We'll have to take two pictures. Okay. So we you just got know. a, um, I'm sorry, real quick. So we just got a question from, from Nick Laird um, asking if this presentation will be shared with people who couldn't make it. And, and yes, it will be. Um, I believe the plan is to um, uh, share this in our next newsletter. Correct. And uh, that way, members who couldn't make it can, uh, can see it. So thank you for that question. Okay. Are we ready? You don't know which group you're in, so smile. Okay, here comes the next group. What a good looking crowd. <laughs> okay, thank you all. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, guys. All right, well, I don't see any uh, questions pouring in. So um, I think that uh, we're going to call this a night. So thank you, everybody. Um